So this is going to be a relatively quick tutorial about how to use the pen tool with the specific idea of making your pen points on the pen tool as efficient as possible for really professional work where you need exacting amounts of control like drawing your own custom typography or working on custom logos. And this comes because I made another tutorial about how to draw a swoosh. So I'll link that tutorial so you can watch that in the description if you want to watch that where someone had called me out for basically using the pen tool poorly or not using it as efficiently as I could have. They didn't say it in quite such of a nice manner, but, but the general idea is that yes, you can use the pen tool with much fewer points and get much more exacting control that will remove the need for you to use stuff like the smooth tool or the fine adjustments that sometimes you have to make if you have too many points. There are reasons sometimes to do it like I did in the swoosh tool tutorial where I was much more focused on speed there than exacting performance perfection because the end result I was working for didn't need exacting perfection. But this is really the most technical and correct way to draw using the pen tool. Specifically, if you're doing stuff like logo design or typography work, you really should be working this way so that you have a level of fine tuned control that will really help you make small adjustments with less frustration. So I'm going to get started here with an S because it's a really good shape to show the general thought process of what you have to do. I have it on my own layer in the background here and it's locked so I should note when you're drawing the way I'm going to be showing you how it is extremely helpful to have a background either sketch or an object or something to essentially trace over as you're doing this because sometimes the result you make might look super funky as you're doing it because you end up cleaning up after you've made the initial pen movements so if you want to do that on your own just on your opening layer right here place your object in this case I just use a font s and I drew a circle to show a different point in a little bit and I made them a light gray so they don't stick out too much as I'm tracing over them and it makes it easier for me to see what I am doing but if you have a pencil sketch bring that in here or whatever the case might be but like I said it really helps to have a sketch and when you're done I like to just to the right of the eyeball icon in your layers palette which is under window and then layers sort of near the middle here just to the right in the open box click it once until a lock icon appears and that way you can't accidentally move this stuff around as you're tracing over it which can be frustrating and then just make a new layer by hitting this create a new layer button in the layers palette and I'll turn the visibility of this back on and this is where I'll be drawing so what I want to do too here is I want to set my fill to nothing so I'm gonna to go to my toolbar right here click on the fill up front and hit this thing that says none it looks like a white box with a red diagonal line going through it and I'm gonna double click on my stroke and you can tell it's a stroke because it looks like a box with a box missing out of the center so I'm gonna double click on that and make it sort of a light blue color I don't know why I tend to gravitate towards light blue I just do and I'll also set my stroke which is under window and then stroke right here to a really small weight like a quarter point 0.25 because I don't want my stroke to overlap this shape right here all that much other people prefer to do this by working with a fill instead of a stroke and you can of course do that if you prefer working that way I prefer using a stroke but if you prefer drawing with a fill filling stuff in feel free to do that the only downside to using a fill for example is as you start to draw stuff you can tell the fill really fills everything in and it can be a bit frustrating if you can't see what you're doing but when it's a stroke you can still see the line much better so that's why I prefer to work that way but that's totally up to you so when you have an object like an S the main thing you got to pay attention to is basically any shape that is circular or has a bunch of curves like this there'll be a beginning point a middle point and then an end point to that arc shape and that's what you have to make your points on so for a circle like this you only need four points to draw that shape you shouldn't use any more than four because if you do you're basically just making life a little bit harder on yourself and for an S right here this S shape basically that point is right here at the beginning there's one up at the top here and then there's one at the corner as you get into this swooping section right here of the S it gets a bit more complicated because you'll basically put I'll just draw a line right here one point right here on the edge of this arc 
But then your next point where you might think it should be right here, for example, if I just draw this right here, you might think you need a point there, but actually that point needs to be over here. So really only be putting these points on the edges on either the side, the top, or the bottom. If it's a middle point, that's a continual curve, much like this S right here, you should not put a point in the center because you can totally make this line work with just these two points. But enough talk, let's actually just do this right here with an S. Since since we have these flat parts, it's an easy place to start. So I'll click once right here to place my initial pen tool point. And the next point, and keep in mind, you're gonna have to move stuff around as we do this, but just make your best guess of where that top part of the arch is on this S. And then you're gonna to wanna to click and hold. And then as you're holding and dragging to draw this arc to the direction that you wanna draw it to, make sure you hold down shift. A big secret to doing this is holding shift anytime that you are drawing an arc. It's really important because it keeps these little lines that go off here either perfectly horizontal or vertical depending on your use case. And it will make your adjustments much easier to make without funky intersection points as we continue moving on. So now I'm gonna click once here on the left side of this S to draw the next point. This looks pretty good and you might think just click once and you're done, but you actually wanna hold shift again and just draw a little bit more to create that secondary point right here that we can manipulate. I'm circling with my pen tool where if you click just once, this little anchor bar right here won't show up. So you wanna make sure you click and drag at least a little bit so you can fine tune adjust this in the future. So this is the point of this large swooping section right here where I said normally you might think you need a point right here, but you actually do not. Your next point is on the inner edge right here of the S. So click, hold, and drag up. And I know this looks really crazy right now, but we will fix this and it will actually fit this contour her perfectly just make sure you're holding shift as you drag it and then let go we will clean up this weird looking intersection in the future in just a second here so the next point right here is at the bottom of this arc so I'm gonna click right here where I think that is hold shift and drag just a little bit to make this anchor bar pull out to the side here so we can use that and I know this looks misaligned but once again we will go in and correct this so now we're coming to a point where it actually ends up being a flat section next so so there's a curve here and then it transitions to a flat section because it transitions into a flat section next we can actually just click once on this edge point and then that's all we have to do we don't have to worry about drawing the anchor bar and holding shift all that stuff so right here is the next point so just a single click for this one don't worry about dragging because this is a straight line and the next one right here will be at the bottom part of this arc on the s so click hold and drag while holding shift and get this relatively close looking but we can clean up all these lines as we continue. Same thing applies for this right side edge on this arc shape of the S. So I'm gonna try to find roughly the center point of that, click, hold, and drag. I know that dragging made this look worse, but we need that anchor bar point, so that's why we did it that way. And this is the same rule right here. We have one continuous swooping section, so we don't actually wanna place a point right here. Even though you might think you need to, you actually don't wanna do that because it'll make life harder on you. The next point is on the edge of this arcing shape right here of the S. So I'm gonna click here, hold, and drag this down just a little bit, and we will clean up this weird looking shape as we continue moving on. So now we're at the top part of the arc. Click, hold, and drag while holding shift. And now we're getting to the section once again, like down here, where it'll be an arc that transitions to a straight line. So I just have to click once, and I don't have to worry about holding shift or dragging my cursor off. And then I'll click once more again at our starting point to go in and complete this section. So now if you look at my blue line right here, this looks pretty darn funky and pretty darn bad as well, but we're gonna clean this up very quickly right here using the direct selection tool. And the direct selection tool looks like a white arrow in your toolbar, and if you hit A on your keyboard, it'll go ahead and select that. And if you highlight using the direct selection tool over any given point, you can tell that it adds in these little anchor bars that we can go ahead and drag. Once again, anytime you click and hold one of these endpoints, they look like a circle, by the way. So these little circular endpoints on these are what we'll be clicking, dragging, and adjusting. Make sure that you hold shift as you click, hold, and drag this until you get these points to line up a little bit better. And this just takes a lot of experimentation. I'm basically just holding shift the whole time I'm doing this because as you move a singular point, it will affect other points around it and they might have to be readjusted. And if you find that no matter what you do, things aren't 
lining up quite right. You might just have to go to the actual point that you initially created like this right here and move that around until things line up appropriately for you. And to quickly show you these large swooping sections that you might not think are going to look too good no matter what I do, what you can do right here is just go to the edge point and I'm going to click hold and drag this bar up a lot until we get this starting to follow this a bit better. And now using that selection tool or the white arrow, I'm going to highlight this point right here and just drag this down while also holding shift. So as you can tell very quickly this made a fairly complicated line, extremely smooth, and I didn't need that middle point, where if I had that middle point, it'd be a potential area of issue that would be much harder for you to align and make look appropriate for the shape of this S. And also, if you can't find your edge points, just click and drag and bring your white arrow cursor over any section of the line that you've created, and you can tell it'll show you the little points that are opened right here. They're designated by what looks like a white filled box, and then you can just highlight over that particular box to bring up the selection tools here for you to go in and modify. So now I'm just going to continue going in and quickly cleaning this up. I'm not going to worry about making this thing absolutely perfect because it could take a little bit of time. That's why sometimes I use the pen tool in a different manner if I just want to quickly get a shape going. But the alternative side to think about that though is that sometimes it actually ends up making you take a longer time to make the object because the cleanup work takes you so much longer. So it's kind of up for you to decide which way of working is best for the particular thing or project that you're working on. But already this is looking pretty darn close here. This will require a little bit more fine tuning, maybe adjusting the way these edges fall just a little bit. Like I said, this can take a lot of time to make sure everything looks absolutely perfect to you. But overall, the idea is to get things as close as you can and just slowly but surely shift things into proper position until you're happy with the end result. So right here, this is extremely close. So if I turn off my base layer right here, this shows the basic outline of the S. And if I use the selection tool, which is V on my keyboard or the black arrow in your toolbar, select over this and then hold shift and hit X, it'll swap the fill and the stroke so we can go ahead and see the finalized shape, which is actually a really nice looking S that doesn't use very many points at all. So this is a very technically well done way of using the pen tool and if you're looking for the most proper way to use the pen tool in general this is the way that you want to do it try to minimize points whenever possible because if you do it properly it'll actually make it less work for you to adjust stuff in the future you never want a bunch of really tightly spaced small points all over the place because getting all those to align in the proper manner is a huge headache and in no way is it fun the smooth tool does indeed help you do that that much quicker but this is technically the most proper way of doing this I'm gonna turn on my base layer at the bottom here again to show another point really quickly when you're dealing with a shape where you don't have a hard edge to start you actually have to start out your pen tool path by clicking holding and dragging and just starting these little points right here out to the side so that when you make your first point off to the side right here that has that little bar already drawn for you I'm just gonna switch this back whoops I didn't want to do that I'm gonna switch this back to the stroke right here and very quickly start drawing my shape by clicking holding dragging and bringing these little bars off to the side because I want each one of these different points to have both a bar on the left and the right so I can adjust it in the future as I need to for this one at the end right here I'm gonna click hold and drag so now if I highlight each one of these points right here you can tell that it has two different bars for me to grab and adjust as needed so that this way I can go in here and fine-tune this until I get this circle looking the the way I want it to look. And of course, if you're drawing something like a circle, use the circle tool. Don't draw it with the pen tool. It's kind of making life harder on you for no reason. But just for example, if I were to just click once right here and not start that path and then start to draw the rest of these as I was before, once I get to this final point right here and then I highlight this point you can tell it doesn't have one of these little bars off to the side on the right side for me to adjust and manipulate so it takes away a little bit of that control for me which will make life a little bit harder as I try to make this thing perfect so in cases like this just make sure that you click hold and drag off to the side first and then you make your next point and that'll apply anytime that you're starting your point on an arc as opposed to a straight edge but that's it for this tutorial 
hopefully this was helpful to you. This is a little bit more of a complex way of thinking about things because you're really trying to do the most with the least, but it is also considered the most technically correct way of using the pen tool because you're minimizing points and actually increasing control because of it. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please like and favorite. And if you want to see stuff like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to keep new content just like this coming for illustrators and designers. Thanks so much for watching.